Number 8. Mark Jones In November of 2020, Mark Jones was elected as the District Attorney of Muskogee County, Georgia. He officially took office the following January, but only nine months into his term, Jones was indicted on multiple felony counts in connection to a public corruption scandal. Court documents revealed that the DA had allegedly offered $1,000 bribes to prosecutors and law enforcement officials on several occasions in order to influence various legal cases. One such incident had occurred during the grand jury hearing of Sarah Holtrop, a Hamilton teen who'd accidentally been shot by an acquaintance named Elijah Farrell. While the latter had only been charged with manslaughter, Jones attempted to bribe a police officer into testifying that Farrell had been in a relationship with the victim and that he'd shot her in a fit of jealousy. The DA reportedly sought to fabricate a motive for the shooting so that prosecutors could upgrade the charge to murder. Jones's criminal indictment in September of 2021 also indicated that he'd bribed multiple prosecutors in his office in connection to other cases. On October the 4th, Jones was suspended from office by Georgia Governor Brian Kemp. A month later, the disgraced DA entered last-minute guilty pleas on four of the felony counts levied against him. He was sentenced to one year in prison and an additional four years of probation. Number 7. Rudy Delgado A former judge from Texas named Rudy Delgado was taken into police custody in February of 2018, roughly two years after the FBI had launched a probe into his activities while serving on the Hidalgo County District Court. The investigation uncovered that the 66-year-old had accepted thousands of dollars in bribes from a defense attorney named Noe Perez between 2008 and 2016. In exchange for the cash sums, Delgado had allegedly agreed to issue favorable judicial outcomes in cases involving Perez's clients. The criminal defense lawyer reportedly concealed the bribe money in six packs of beer, which he then gave to Delgado. The FBI also learned that Perez had gifted a $15,000 pickup truck to Delgado in an effort to curry the judge's favor. Following the investigation, Delgado was charged with conspiracy, federal program bribery, travel act bribery, and obstruction of justice. The latter charge reportedly stemmed from a message the judge had sent to Perez in which he attempted to pass off the bribes as campaign donations. In July of 2019, Delgado was convicted on all counts and sentenced to five years in federal prison, followed by two years of supervised release. Number 6. Ryan Bishti and Frank Partridge In 2009, entrepreneur Ryan Bishti founded a nightclub called Cirque Le Soir in the Soho area of central London. Before long, the club grew into a hotspot for celebrities, having reportedly attracted the likes of Cara Delevingne, Miley Cyrus, and Rihanna since its opening. As Cirque Le Soir rose to prominence, however, Bishti allegedly became a central figure in a bribery scandal involving officers of the Westminster Police. Between February of 2013 and June of 2015, the club owner reportedly conspired with a sergeant named Frank Partridge in the Westminster Police's licensing unit. Although the specific details of their relationship were not immediately reported, Bishti and Partridge had allegedly agreed to a deal in which the former and his club were afforded certain liberties by local police, reputedly in exchange for cash. The scheme was uncovered by investigators from the Directorate of Professional Standards Anti-Corruption Command. In December of 2021, a total of seven defenders, including Bishti and Partridge, appeared during a hearing at Westminster Magistrates Court. One of the individuals accused of criminal activity was Terry Neal, the owner of a security firm named TSS, which reportedly provided door staff to Cirque Le Soir and other Soho nightclubs. The suspects were each charged with conspiracy to commit bribery, and they were scheduled to stand trial in April of 2023. Number 5. Ariel Engert At approximately 2 a.m. on September the 1st of 2015, police officers in Clearwater, Florida, spotted a car driving erratically on the roadway. They pulled the vehicle over and asked its driver, 24-year-old Ariel Engert, to step out onto the sidewalk. The young woman then underwent a series of field sobriety tests, all of which she failed. The officers consequently arrested her and brought her to Pinellas County Jail. Engert was charged with driving under the influence and possession of marijuana, which had reportedly been found in her vehicle. According to a website called The Smoking Gun, Engert attempted to bribe multiple deputies 
while she was in custody, she had allegedly offered to engage in intimate relations with a deputy named Brian Sudbrink in exchange for him allowing her to go free, a proposition which the officer declined. When a body search revealed that Engert had hidden a packet of cocaine in her undergarments, the young woman tried to bribe two more officers with the same offer she had extended to Sudbrink. The deputies named as Obed Munoz and Eric Biddle promptly and decisively rejected her indecent proposals. Engert ultimately faced additional charges of narcotics possession and introduction of contraband into a detention facility. Number 4. The California DMV Bribery Scandal An investigation into alleged corruption within the California Department of Motor Vehicles uncovered a bribery conspiracy pertaining to the production and distribution of fraudulent driver's licenses. A criminal indictment was publicly released by the U.S. Department of Justice in May of 2021. The press release detailed how several people from the Los Angeles area had paid off DMV employees in order to illegally obtain licenses for which they would have otherwise been ineligible. The professed ringleader of the operation was identified as 46-year-old Atanasio Villegas, who'd reportedly worked as a licensed registration examiner at the DMV office in Torrance. Villegas communicated with brokers who accepted bribe money from individuals seeking fraudulent IDs. These brokers supplied the corrupt DMV worker with the client's personal identifying information. Villegas then solicited the help of other DMV employees who falsified information in the department's database to make it appear as if the applicant had passed all the tests and requirements necessary towards obtaining the license. It was reported that Villegas and his co-conspirators had produced and issued more than 100 fake IDs while operating their scam from April to October of 2016. In 2021, multiple people were criminally charged in relation to the case, including Villegas, other DMV employees, and individuals who were found to have illegally acquired their driver's licenses by way of the illicit scheme. Number 3. Babak Bromand 53-year-old Babak Bromand had served as an FBI special agent in Northern California for two decades before retiring in 2019. Shortly thereafter, allegations surfaced that between 2015 and 2017, Broman had accepted hundreds of thousands of dollars in bribes from a lawyer with ties to an Armenian criminal element. During the two-year period in which he was accused of taking part in the bribery scheme, the former FBI agent had reportedly been working on national security matters at the San Francisco field office. The corrupt attorney identified as Edgar Sargassian was alleged to have given Broman cash and expensive gifts which included a motorcycle, hotel stays, and escort services in exchange for confidential information. A federal criminal complaint against Bromand stated that he'd also used his power and privilege as an FBI employee to help Sargassian evade detection by law enforcement. It later emerged that the former special agent had used a portion of the reported $200,000 in bribe money he'd accepted to make a down payment on a $1.3 million vacation home near Lake Tahoe. Following his retirement, Bromant had worked as a campus investigator at the University of California, Berkeley, until his arrest on April the 24th of 2020. He was thereupon charged with conspiracy to commit bribery of a public official in April of 2021. He was also charged with three counts of making false statements to a government agency after it had been discovered that he'd falsified federal documents to mask the true origin of the bribe money. Today's topic was requested by Esther Cavadia. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. The Arrest of Jirapong Thanapat On August 5th of 2021, Jirapong Thanapat age 24 was taken into police custody with his girlfriend after they'd been caught selling illegal substances in Northeast Thailand. The suspect reportedly offered Thai police roughly $25,000 in an effort to facilitate his and his partner's immediate release. The officers initially accepted Thanapat's bribe, but they subsequently attempted to extort even more money from him by way of torture. The police chief, identified as Thetisan Utanapon, allegedly wrapped five plastic bags around Thanapat's head and taped his hands together. The chief then proceeded to shake the suspect violently 
while trying to get him to double the amount of money he'd offered them. Thanapat eventually collapsed unconscious, and the officer's attempts to revive him proved unsuccessful. He was transported to a hospital where he was pronounced dead the following day. An autopsy would eventually confirm initial suspicions that he'd succumbed to deliberate suffocation. Utanapon reportedly recorded the death as a drug overdose and released Thanapat's girlfriend on the condition that she not reveal the truth about the incident. A junior officer at the police station later leaked CCTV footage of Thanapat being tortured, which prompted the Thai Prime Minister to order an investigation into the man's death. Several officers were taken into custody following the probe, while Utanapon eventually surrendered to the authorities after he'd initially gone on the run. Number 1. Operation Varsity Blues On March the 12th of 2019, federal prosecutors in Boston, Massachusetts publicly disclosed the details of a vast criminal conspiracy centered on bribing admissions officials at several notable American universities. The FBI's investigation, which had been codenamed Operation Varsity Blues, exposed a total of 53 individuals who'd taken part in the bribery scandal between 2011 and 2018. 33 of the defendants were parents of college applicants who'd allegedly paid more than $25 million in total bribe money to William Rick Singer, the man responsible for orchestrating the scheme. Federal investigators learned that Singer had coordinated the illicit operation through the two college counseling firms he owned, Key Worldwide Foundation and the Edge College and Career Network. After accepting money from parents, Singer would fraudulently inflate applicants' entrance exam test scores. If the falsified test results didn't strengthen the application enough for the student to be accepted into the university directly, Singer would often resort to simply using monetary bribes to influence college admissions decisions. He also allegedly fabricated elite sports credentials on behalf of certain students so as to award them athletic scholarships that they wouldn't have otherwise been granted. In addition to Singer and the parents from whom he'd accepted bribes, the criminal indictments also implicated staff members at various prestigious universities including Yale, Stanford, Georgetown, Northwestern and the University of Southern California. After news of the scandal had been made public, it emerged that a number of the parents alleged to have been involved were prominent public figures including actors Laurie Lachlan, William H. Macy and Felicity Huffman, as well as business people Gamal Assis, Manuel Enriquez and Jane Buckingham. The maximum penalty for the charges against Singer was 65 years in prison and a $1.25 million fine. The conspiracy's first criminal trial, which reportedly involved Aziz and another parent named John Wilson, began on September the 8th of 2021. Both men were convicted the following month, after the jury assigned to their case had deliberated for roughly 10 hours. Thanks for watching. If you could only get into college by bribing the admissions office, would you do it? Let us know in the comments section below.